Hi, my name is Yotam Alkhol. I'm a researcher at Definity, and this presentation is about the peer-to-peer -peer layer of the internet computer. So the internet computer is designed to be secure, reliable, and scalable. Scalability is provided by breaking it into subnets. Each subnet can be viewed as a smaller internet computer running some canisters on multiple nodes. The peer-to-peer -peer layer enables scalable, reliable, and secure communication between nodes of the same subnet. So each subnet is a set of nodes. These are computers that communicate with each other over the internet. Let's see where we are. This is the internet computer. It runs on the internet computer protocol. The internet computer protocol has four major layers. Execution manages a safe environment for deterministic execution of software. Message routing routes valid messages to destinations. Consensus arranges messages into blocks and validates them. The peer-to-peer -peer layer makes information available at one IC node reach enough other IC nodes in the same subnet efficiently. In this talk, I'll touch the following topics of the P2P -P layer of the internet computer. Requirements, basic principles, interaction with application components, data structure, the GOSI protocol, and bandwidth and memory considerations. Here we see a diagram of one node of the internet computer. The peer-to-peer -peer layer is responsible for sending out artifacts created by the layers above, for example, consensus, and for receiving, validating, processing, and distributing artifacts arriving from other nodes in the same subnet, as well as from users. Peer-to-peer -peer also handles artifacts for state synchronization, certification, etc. The peer-to-peer -peer layer guarantees that if a correct node sends an artifact to its peers, then that artifact will eventually be received by all correct nodes in the subnet. This can be viewed as a special case of reliable broadcast tailored for our consensus algorithm with priorities, and under some network assumptions, it provides bounded time delivery. We would like the peer-to-peer -peer layer to provide that guarantee under the following requirements. Bounded time delivery, depending on our network assumptions, we would like to be able to guarantee that the message is delivered within a bounded time or an error is delivered instead if we failed. With weaker assumptions, we can only guarantee eventual delivery. Byzantine faults, we would like to tolerate up to a certain threshold of valid artifacts that may be dropped, or up to a certain threshold of node that may not follow the protocol. Guaranteed resources for each peer, we would like each peer to have its own share of the resources available at other peers. We would also like to bound the resource usage by each peer so that we can guarantee the previous point. We would like to be able to prioritize different artifacts with different priorities. We would like to provide high throughput and avoid duplication of data. Thus, we prefer throughput over latency. It might mean longer wait for delivery, but it utilizes the network better. We would also like to protect against denial of service and spam by malicious nodes. And of course, we want everything to be encrypted, the authenticity to be verified, and integrity as well. Peer-to-peer -peer uses a gossip mechanism to distribute messages in the subnet. The principle of the gossip protocol is to send messages that you have received or messages you created to your peers in the subnet. This is an analogy to human spreading rumors. The peers in peer-to-peer -peer are determined by an overlaid network topology. Everything is guaranteed to be delivered in the order of the diameter number of hops if the overlay is undirected and connected, all nodes follow the protocol, and no message is dropped. There are several problems we would like to avoid when considering Byzantine nodes. The first is Eclipse attack, where all peers of a certain node happen to be malicious or faulty. The faulty nodes can collude and select which artifacts the correct node sees, and practically disconnect that node from the rest of the network. Because we validate the authenticity of messages, malicious node cannot trick a honest node with spoofed messages, but the connectivity problem remains. To avoid that, we must use overlays with large enough min cut and expansion, so that for every node, at least one neighbor is correct. Finding such a set of overlays is not trivial, so I'll not get into details in this talk. I'll only note that each node uses a different overlay, so that eventually all nodes are connected. For small enough subnets, we use the entire subnet, a complete graph, instead of an overlay. But for larger subnets, such as the NNS, we will use more sparse overlays. Another possible issue is the duplicate problem, where large messages are sent multiple times from multiple peers. 
Imagine that you have to hear the same rumor over and over again from multiple friends. This wastes bandwidth or your attention span, so we would like to avoid that. So instead of just coming to you and telling you the rumor again, your friend could start by asking you, have you heard about this? In our context, this corresponds to adverts that are sent first. These are small messages that contain information on artifacts and means to validate them, but not their content. Each node then requests an artifact from at least one peer. I'm saying at least because we start by asking one peer, but if we encounter a problem, we may ask another peer for the same artifact, and this might repeat until we find the honest peer that is non-faulty. So an advert is a small message with only some metadata of some artifact. It does not include the actual data of the artifact. It includes fields that are used by the gossip protocol and its application components for integrity verification, for example, an integrity hash, and for decision making, for example, attributes that help the uh, components to prioritize artifacts. The next question is what adverts should be requested first. For that, Gossip relies on a priority function. Each advert contains some attributes, as I said before. For example, these ones you see on the screen for consensus adverts. Peer-to-peer -peer expects consensus to provide it with a priority function that is then used to decide which artifacts to request next. For example, if consensus is at height 10 now, it may prefer artifacts for that height than those for height 11 or 12. That's depending on their type as well and possibly other state parameters, but as a general rule, it would prefer the same height over new ones. Peer-to-peer -peer does not make the decision. The clients do, based on the attributes that are visible in the adverts. These are provided to the priority function, which then decides the priority of the adverts. The priority can be, I don't care about this artifact at all, or yeah, fetch it sometime, or fetch it immediately, it's an important one. In the future, we could have more granular priority values if needed. For now, this is enough for our protocol. The artifact pool is where artifacts handled by gossip are stored. It informs consensus and the other client components about changes in the pool by calling an onState change function. Then the application component determines its next action with regard to the artifact pool. The artifact pool contains all available artifacts for each application component. It keeps track of which artifacts have been validated by the corresponding client application component, but it is agnostic to client details except for a few attributes. We split artifacts to validated and unvalidated. The latter class is for those artifacts that have not yet been validated. Validation means checking the artifacts by the client component, for example, by verifying signatures. The artifact pool of a client can be persistent to non-volatile storage if needed, we do that for consensus artifacts. Here we see what data structures a node holds for gossip. On the left is the artifact pool, which is separated into validated and unvalidated sections. Unvalidated sections hold those artifacts that were not yet validated. For this, they are separate per peer in order to ensure that each peer has its own quota and prevents resource leak and null of service attacks by bad peers. In addition, for each peer, we maintain its context, which help us track which adverts we received, which adverts we requested, from whom, etc. The adverts queue is a priority queue of all adverts received from this peer. They are ordered by their priority. The requested set contains all adverts for which the corresponding artifacts were already requested from this peer. The received check cache is used to prevent requesting adverts that were recently completed. I will elaborate on that soon. These are the main events that the GOSI protocol handles. A new artifact that is added locally by an application component, a new advert that is received from a peer, a new artifact that is received from a peer, and recovery and reconnection issues. In the next slides, we will discuss these events for an overlay that looks like this one. For the first case, new artifact that was added locally, GOSIP creates an advert and sends it to all its peers in the overlay network. When a node receives an advert from a peer, it first checks whether the corresponding artifact was already downloaded or created by the node itself. If not, it adds it to the adverts queue of the peer that sent it. 
If there is enough space for this peer in its unvalidated section of the artifact pool, we call a function called download next specifically for this peer to ask it to send us the next artifact based on the priority function. So it is not necessarily that we request the artifact for which we just received an advert. We will just request the artifact with the highest priority. The download next function uses the priority given by the priority function I discussed before. It chooses the advert with the highest priority and then it moves it from the advert queue to the requested set of the peer from whom we are requesting this artifact. We may have the same advert in the advert pool of multiple peers, as multiple peers may have sent it to us. The adverts will remain in the advert queue of the other peers until we receive the actual artifact. A timeout is set to protect against unresponsive or too slow peers. This helps guaranteeing bounded time delivery. We will avoid requesting an artifact from a peer we already requested it, as it may be misbehaving. So in this case, we look whether other peers have advertised this same artifact, and if so, we'll try to fetch it from them before retrying the unresponsive peer. Then, we send the request to the peer. When we receive an artifact from a peer, we first make sure it was requested. Otherwise, it means this peer is misbehaving. We then remove the corresponding adverts from all peer context, the requested sets and the adverse queues. And we add the artifact to the unvalidated pool of the peer who sent it. We leave it there for the client component to check and validate it. We also add a hash of it to a small cache called receive check, maintained per peer, to ignore further adverts for the same artifact. This is done to provide some grace period for the application component to update their priority function so that they do not request the same ad advert again. If we still have space for this peer in the unvalidated artifact pool, we request the next artifact from it according to priority using the download next function. Below the gossip component, there is a transport component that maintains the actual network connections between peers. The transport component is responsible for trying to keep connections stable. It has its own send buffers for cases of transient connectivity problems and congestion. And it has an internal heartbeat mechanism to ensure connections do not hang. This is important for providing bounded time delivery. Transport frames gossip messages with its own layer 7 header that contains a few metadata fields used by the transport component to maintain the flows, report errors, and so on. Currently, transport uses multiple TCP streams between peers. We are investigating a potential switch to Quick in the future. Transport uses TLS 1.3 in a way that is adapted to such a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network with no certificate authority hierarchy as the root of trust. Instead, the root of trust is the registry that provides self-signed certificates for nodes. When a connection is re-established, we drain the transport queues. For longer interruptions, the node would wait for the peer to come up. Since all data structures are bounded in size, this applies to transport buffers as well. In case such a buffer becomes full, or if we've been waiting for a reconnection, Transport eventually notifies the receiver gossip of a potential message drop. The receiver can then send a retransmission request. A retransmission request is a message of the gossip protocol that has a filter to tell the sender what the latest adverts it has seen are. It might be that other peers already successfully sent the same adverts by then. Upon receiving a retransmission request, the sender node sends all the relevant adverts according to the filter that is included with the request. Transport sends these adverts to the receiver. If the queue becomes full again during this process, another retransmission request for the remaining adverts will be sent. To summarize the role of the peer-to-peer -peer layer, it is responsible for providing bounded time delivery of artifacts in a subnet. It uses an advert request artifact pattern and overlay topologies to reduce bandwidth requirement. There is a prioritization API to client components to ensure highest priority artifacts are delivered first and the design is fault tolerant. Thank you very much for your attention.